What is up, Sauce Nation? It is your boy, Hector Flores. And we got some members here in the round table with y'all. So we'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. It's Ray Ray, usually the pigskin prophet, but not in this case. We're talking Stros, baby. What's going on, Astro fans? I know it's your first time introduction to me with the Astro videos. It's Toxic Tin Man. You know I'm here to bring the toxic point of view. All right. It wouldn't be Sauce Sports without that awkward part. I'll, I'll be more directive next time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you guys can tell, we're going to be talking Stros. We're going to be doing the top five pitching options, not free agents, not any, nothing else like that. We're going to give you guys options. So we're looking at free agents, trades, and also looking at that farm system. So before we get going with that video, make sure you guys want, like this video, subscribe to Sauce Sports, click on that notification bell. So you will be notified when we drop videos just like this. And of course, when we do our live streams, whenever that happens. And also, if you guys want a little bit extra sauce, man, make sure you guys go ahead and join the Patreon. It, once you do that, it'll put you in the Discord, and that's where the fun really begins. I guarantee you that. Ray Ray can tell you, Sandy can tell you, it gets fun in the in the Discord. Fire! Well, yeah, now that we got the formalities out of the way, let's get going with this video. And we're going to start things off with, how do you guys feel particularly on the position starting pitcher? How drastic of a need is position? And we'll start things off with the toxic man. Man, it's going to be really important because that's one of the things that they really lacked in the World Series. Um, you had some good play from our starting pitchers. And you really want to start to build your bullpen to go into a postseason run. Now, do you do it this early? No. But you want to start getting that supporting cast. You want to get started getting those guys around your kitty and everybody else. And you want to see them push forward and really get some play time throughout the season. Um, it's going to be really important that they get this really solidified because building rhythm through your bullpen is huge. Because you want those guys to go into comfortable situations through series and actually take control of it from the on get or from the uh, onset. I'm sorry. Um you look at the Astros and they're very talented, but they can improve in a lot of positions, especially at uh, at that opener. Um, some of the guys we might be looking at, you got uh, Sean Monet. Uh, he looks really good. He's a left-handed pitcher. Uh, definitely knows how to work the box really well. I really liked what I've seen out of him, at least what I went to go look at, some of the highlights that I was able to see. Some of the, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My shit's going in cursing mode and I'm trying to stop myself from cursing. But uh, pretty much you see what he did what, over there with the athletics. And I liked what he did. He's a big, strong guy, throws really hard with that left arm and he can move it around the box really well. So I'm hoping to see something like that come down in here. If the Astros were going to target anybody to bring him in, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Talking about the guy that we have actually listed number five on this list is uh, Jean Manaya. Um And yeah, like I like what you said. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. That's how that's how major leagues is completely. That's how the business run. And you're absolutely right. Sean and I is an interesting one. Um, and Ray Ray, I want to ask you, like, how, how how is it? Would it be would it be attainable? Because we're talking about a guy that his contract is expiring this season. This is his last going into the last year of his contract. Could we see possibly the Astros making a trade their rivals over at Oakland? Uh, so history would dictate that normally that's that would probably not be wise right like you're trading inner division like almost inner division rival so you know your instinct would go no don't do that but unlike football and in baseball you can find pretty good inner divisional talent uh whether through be through the farm system or whatever the case may be uh and speaking of sean uh, i call him aquaman if you actually pay attention, that fool is actually I do I, I like I like baseball cards. Just if you case y'all didn't know, I have a card of him dressed up like friggin' Aquaman. I, and it's just it's comical, it's funny. But like Tinny said, uh, you know, he's a lefty and he does the work. Now, in this particular case, with what the Hector was asking, would I take that one year and then okay, we're gonna have to, or we're gonna see another Randy Johnson type situation, you know, something to that effect. I honestly don't think that that would be the case. And here's why. He's not going to want a, a, a bunch of money. He'll want he'll want a good chunk, but he's not going to want your upper echelon uh, starting rotation kind of guy. He's just not. So why not just have a year, see if he proves, see if he's even part of what you like doing there in Houston, which we don't know yet because we got to figure out you know what our pitching rotation is going to be anyway. So and again, time's going to tell on that. But ultimately, in the end, it would not be someone that I would be I would shy away from. It's someone that I would take a strong look at. And I would definitely try to bring him in here. And there's a reason we we kind of to segue into the next guy that that I think we all three can pretty much agree on that we like we want a lefty. We want it starting. We we need we need someone to eat up innings in the left hand side of the plate. Okay. Now it's true we have a lefty. We need more. We need okay. 
in this, I can't say in this new age of baseball, I would say most times, most teams have anywhere between two or three left-handed pitchers, and most of them are always starting, right, for the most part. Uh, you need maybe one lefty low relief guy, maybe somebody's a mid tier, mid uh, mid inning guy, or a lefty set of guys slash uh, maybe even a closer and a pinch. Right in this particular case, Danny Duffy to me kind of that matches up the same thing with Sean. Honestly, I mean, it's someone we need. He had a pretty he's had a pretty good career for the most part. Honestly, uh, he doesn't wow you, but he gets the job done. He had an ERA of two fifty one, had a whip of 12, uh, 1.213, 65 Ks. Yeah, he's 33. But again, we're not looking for an uber long-term solution because I'm sure Hector's going to go into this later. Well, we have a pretty good, put pretty good foundation in the pitching staff. It's just going to be a matter of time before it matures and blossoms into something crazy so yeah danny duffy definitely an interesting player like you said has a has a very low era his whip is below average but is still respectable and yeah the, the high strikeout count which I'm, the low strikeout count i don't want to say high but yeah it has a very low strikeout count which i know most astros fans love that we have pitchers that can definitely but yeah you're right it, it danny duffy does pray uh offer a different level and he is actually the number one guy that we're looking at but we're going to go back to that number four and it is, uh, you know what, Detroit is like trying to make some moves with Carlos Correa. Well, why don't we go ahead and make a move for one of their guys in Matt Boyd. He's 30 years old. He currently had, he, last season, he had a 389 uh, ERA and a whip of 1271. And also the strikeouts were pretty low with six strikeouts. But once again, we're not looking for a, an ace. We're not looking for any, like the guy. I think we do have the guy in this rotation already. We just need some stability in the back end. And I think Matt Boyd does that exactly. Um, uh, Tenny, what do you think right there? I think Matt Boyd would be, um, yeah, I think he was going to do it really well because he paints that box. Um, from what I've seen, he can actually work them outside edges really well. And what, if I'm correct, if I remember right, Matt Boyd likes to go to the outside of the batter. So he'll work that outside of the box and get them to reach on stuff, which also helps your defense because that brings the uh, that brings that ball to hook inside. It puts it in the air a little bit more. It makes it more um more gettable. It helps the fielders. It helps the outfield. So I think a pitcher like that would definitely help because a lot of teams now are getting heavy in the bat and they are starting to find rhythm and they're starting to build like really good hitters, really, um, really good hitters. And they're really starting to get some rhythm going in that direction. So it'd be interesting to bring Matt Boyd in. Ray, Ray, what are your thoughts on Matt Boyd? I actually, I, I second pretty much everything that Tenny said. I mean, with, with, with Boyd, it's it goes back to what we were just talking about. I mean, Hector just mentioned it a minute ago. We're not looking for, we're looking for someone who can eat up innings that can keep the whip relatively low, who's not going to be a bank breaker, so to speak, like your your typical names that someone would think you need to go after. We're looking for that 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 person just to, uh, the fill-in piece, just one of the many missing pieces, even though this roster be frank, doesn't have very many. Uh, as far as this, as far as this goes, as far as Boyd goes, that's I think he would be a good asset to this franchise. And I, I don't think I think anyone on this list for the record that we're going to go over is going to be a good option. Yeah, exactly my point. And it, this is a guy that's actually go, is right now a free agent. We got, obviously got away with what's going on with that lockout, but he is uh, I think a very reasonable option for the Houston Astros. But we're not also looking at free agents and trade pieces. We're also looking at guys that we have already in this farm. And going at number three, we have JP France, a 26 year old. He has last season over with the Skeeters. I believe also did a little bit with uh, with Chris Christie, but had an ERA of 3.79, a whip of 1.289, and had what you guys want to see, 157 strikeouts. Now we're talking about the minor leagues. Obviously, the competition is a little bit different, and there's always that fear about these guys. How are they going to be in that next level? But I think JP France is one of those guys that we're going to have to see eventually in an Astros uniform sooner than later. It may not be as a starter, probably coming off the bullpen, but best believe I think he's going to be a big part of that Astros future. So we're going to start with Ray Ray. What are your thoughts on Jay? Well, I, I, I like France. And I, I think if you're going to, I think he had, uh, I think he was like, I think he had 60 games total last year in the minors. If I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, if JP France it was, it was ever to make a jump, it would be this year. It would have to be this year. Um, I hope he comes out. And if we even have, Lord knows if we even have a spring training this year, I hope he comes out and he just shows up to where he has to put the Astros in position of, okay, he, he needs to be called up. We need to go ahead and see what he's got at a major league level and just kind of work with that. Um, I, I really, what I really like, I like his whip. I really like, I think one, one, I think it's 129 was his whip. 
Uh, really, really, really nice whip. I, I like the way he actually, he doesn't seem to get rattled. Do you guys get that? Like, I feel like he doesn't get your, your normal rattle that you would see on other people. It's very stoic in a way. I don't see mm -hmm. him very giving up a lot of emotion. Very uh, mature for would, his age. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's very usually with pitchers like that, you know, unlike you, you know, you go down the list of like your Giles or something like that. You know what I mean? Someone who just reliever closers in particular can kind of get away with that because it's how they're function and how they're made. But when you're kind of a starting pitcher, lower rotational guy, you need to have a little bit of poise. You need to have a little bit of, okay, I understand my role. This is what it's going to be. And then work from there. Exactly. Tim, and any, any follow up on, on JP France? JP France, he, his numbers look good. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to bullshit you and I'm not going to say a whole bunch of crap about it. But the one thing that I did see that popped out on film to me is he needs to get a little bit more control over his balls. When they go high and they go low, he gets he loses control of them. They go into the dirt. They get a little high in the major league. They're going to sit on those pitches. They're going to wait. They're going to make you get in, put yourself into a corner inside your head. You're going to get into a box. And I don't know if that's like good direction for him right now like if the league or not the league if the team wants to go ahead and speak with him and start preparing him to come up i think that's one thing that they need to focus on if they talk to him they need to get those pitches under control because he's got great numbers which reflect that he's doing his job that he's going out there on the mound and he's getting it done but i need to see more control because if they get wild up top that's a runner moved. If they go into the dirt and it's a foul or something, you know, you could advance a runner. Anything that affects the team where you're advancing a runner in any kind of way that you pitch that ball, you're a detriment. And we don't need you. I'm sorry. If, call me toxic. Call me mean. Call me ugly. But in baseball, you really got to prove your worth. And if you can't control those balls and it starts to become a detriment to the team, you're not worth my time. So I would like to see him get a little bit more control. The numbers are there. I agree with Ray Ray. It's time to start, you know, <laughs> shit or get off the pot. Really, that's all it comes down to. Yeah, very good thoughts, exactly. And then we're, we're gonna, at number two, we have another prospect in John Denver Bermudez, another 26 year old. This past season, he had a 3.24 ERA with a whip of 104 and had a whomping 146 strikeouts this season. Now, Tin Man, you were seeing the film. Tell me how you feel about John Denver Bermudez. Well, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's almost too good to be true. I really like watching him pitch the ball. This guy has, he, he goes high, he goes low, he goes inside, he goes a little bit outside, but it's more in that outside corner. He looks good, man. And for the, the limited amount of what he's had moving just from Corpus Christi to Sugar Land, it, it's nice. Now, I'm not saying put all your, all your eggs in one basket and, you know, hope for the best. It's one of those things where if you put him on this path, you have to see it through. Get him to the games. Get him the, the the games, the pitches. Get him whatever you need, Houston Astros, and then think about moving him up. Whatever your number, whatever's in your head, whatever says, okay, I'm ready to get this guy up here, maybe that's the path you want to follow. It might be a little fast. It might be a little move a little quicker than most people think that baseball should, but I'm kind of unorthodox when I think about baseball. I like to see things come fast. I'm not afraid of them. Let's get out there and get this done. Jonathan Bermudez definitely has my thumbs up on this shit. All right, you got the 10-man approval. Does he have the Ray Ray stamp? Uh, yeah, no, he does. He, I mean, everything Tenny said is complete. I mean, he jumps off. He, he's kind of guy that when you're watching him, his pitches just jump. They jump out. They jump out at you from velocity to everything, everything. Rotation. They even have this rotation uh, little animated kind of matrix games that I saw sometimes this year. That his, his spin rate is upper echelon. I mean, Jesus. I, if if you got, I mean, we're talking like. Lance McCullers type spin rate, which is insane, I might add. But um, that's a big thing right now. Teams really look at that. Clubs really look at that. He ain't getting any younger. You know what I mean? Um, like, just like, uh, just like, uh, oh man, I forgot his name. Anyways, just like uh, our last prospect we're talking about, same concept. You got to, you got to, you got to get, you got to go. You got to send him out there. You need, you need someone to be at that position. Why not take a shot at him? I mean, considering what he did, I mean, he had barely above a three ERA between Corpus and Sugarland. I mean, it's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn stout. Not a lot of pitchers can make that transition that easy. So again, if you're going to do it, definitely this would be the year to do it, especially since we need that peak. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, I mean, Ray Ray already mentioned it, but our number one is Danny Duffy, 33 years old, 251 yeah, ERA, 1.213 whip and, and 65 strikeouts. 
Uh, Danny Duffy was with Kansas City last season, and we all know how Kansas City was last season. And, but we don't need to talk about it. Also, fun fact: this guy is a former Dodger. Right now, we friends just don't give a shit yeah. that part. But what are you, what are your thoughts, Ray Ray? I mean, you kind of said it about Danny Duffy, so I'll go ahead and give it to Tim over here. Okay. What do you think about Danny Duffy, and what can he bring to the Astros if we're seeing him as the number one guy? As far as Danny Duffy goes, I liked everything that I've seen about him. He He's commanding on the mound. He goes out there and gets it done. And he, he's he got a flow to him. He gets into his rhythm and he just sees it through. And that's one thing that I really liked about him. Um, one of the things that was kind of like on the top of my mind as I went to look at him a little bit more is that he had a uh, surgery on his uh, left, was it his left flexor? So that's one of those things that I'm kind of like, eh. But I mean, when you're trying to get the bullpen together, when you're trying to get that starting lineup together, why not at the beginning of the season? Why not pull like, Take a flyer on this guy. It's one of those things that can help the team and really push them forward and get them going in the right direction. I think Danny Duffy brings leadership, brings experience, and he's got a great pitch. and He's got great rhythm. I mean, if you miss on him, you miss on him. But why not take the chance? Why not bring him in here and try to improve what you got? Exactly. I think this is one of those low risk, high reward type of opportunities. Kind of similar. Not, not trying to say exactly similar, to, similar but similar to one uh, to one Charlie Morton. Are we are we think is this could be this that and then we're also talking about we need experience added into this this, this pitching comp, uh, group and I think Danny Duffy does provide he has plenty of playoff experience knows what it what it takes to make it in this league is this a pitcher that maybe would definitely help with this young pitching core and that's that T Ray Ray what uh, what question <laughs> uh, what is he how 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 can he help mentor this young pitching core? oh no that's that that goes without saying the age says it all uh, anyone that's above thirty that has had a history of success whether it be with the Royals, the Dodgers, whatever the case may be, he's been a pretty constant throughout his entire career. He, he really has. It, it, there's a couple of seasons where he fell off the wagon. I mean, he got right back on it and did good. I mean, obviously, the Dodgers don't pick up scrubs. Let's just be honest. All right? So if he's making their rotation and they're giving him, you know, a chunk of change to be in there, you got to take you got to take a serious look at him. Uh, I think, if anything, it goes back to what we said earlier. You're talking about mentoring the young rotation that's going to come in. And when the rotation comes up and he says, hey, you know, this is maybe kind of the way you do it, just like any other sport, you take advantage of that. That's something you surely should do. There's no, there's nothing wrong with bringing someone in. And again, like Tenny brought up, it's his injury. Well, I mean, if there's an injury and you're concerned about it, maybe give him a prove it deal. Maybe try to see if you can get a little bit uh, less for him to get him in here and see what he can do and just kind of provide. So that would be what I would say about it. Exactly. And then this is the part where we'll go to honorable mention. So uh, we'll start things off with the toxic man. What are some, what are some pitches out there that you, you think we should be also looking at? I'm going to murder his name, but Kukichi, Kukachi, Kichichichi. I loved him. <laughs> I loved him. Man. I love guys that can find rhythm and work the box, man. That pitching is an art. Like, you really watch the game and you really love this game. Besides all the bullshit everybody gets pissed off about, all the things, you know, these tag, you know, any kind of little cheats that people use. And I'm not saying Kokichi uses it or Kochachi uses that shit. I'm just saying that when you watch these guys get in rhythm, when you watch them work that box, when you really see them go out there and give body shot after body shot to these batters and they just get uncomfortable, I like that about him. You know, I think that he's somebody else that you might want to keep your eye on if things fall through. If you have, I mean, the Astros have their own set of eyes. I mean, we know baseball. They got 20 guys watching 20 guys watching another 20 guys. So everybody's out there always looking at somebody. But for Kukichi, I really liked him. I think that he could work the box really well. That'd be somebody I would like to see the uh, Astros target. That's another experienced person that would come in here, actually add that depth add that leadership, really get guys more comfortable and really get them going in the direction. And everything's about getting into the direction. You go into the league, you go into the season, trying to find a direction, trying to find your, 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 uh, your stitch, your, 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 uh, your thing. And you want to do that. So why not get these experienced guys in here, see who works, who doesn't, because you have well over a hundred games to get ready and move into the postseason. Exactly. Honorable mention for you, Ray Ray. And I got to go with Hunter Brown. He's, I think, either the number three or number four prospect in the Astros top 20 right now. Uh, he's a right-handed pitcher. I mean, it, but he got roughed up last year. That's the problem I am having. He got roughed up in between uh, Round Rock and, and Sugarland, And so I need him 
to be a little more consistent. But his stuff is is incredible. He's got the potential to be a mid rotation guy, maybe even upper rotation kind of guy. And I would love to see him get a get a chance at it because at this point I've kind of given up on Force Whitley. To be honest with you. Uh, so uh, at this point, I need another pitcher to step up. And we've already mentioned a couple of guys in the system that have a real good shot. Well, you know, he's one of those as well. So that's what I'd go with. You know what? You kind of said my guy, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it anyways. Forrest Whitley is, is a guy that I'm <laughs> kind of similar to what Tenny said. It's, you know, it's time to get out, off the pot. And I think that's what it is right now with Forrest Whitley. It's been really unfortunate how his, how his time so far as a professional baseball player has been, you know, with with the whole the whole drug incident that happened for him. And then obviously now with the injuries, it, you know, it's time that he needs to, you know, hopefully get back into full fitness and be the pitcher that the Astros have thought he was going to be giving him that that first round selection. So I think it is now it's, it's sooner rather than later. It's time to knock out, try to get Forrest Whitley out on the mound and see what he can do as an Astro player. But yeah, so those are those are our top five guys, man. I think I think any of these guys could come in and, and help out the Astros. I don't think we necessarily need to go out there and get ourselves a Rondon or or I don't believe we made we missed out on a Max Scherzer. I think right now the Astros have something internally that they're ready for. And I can't wait to see it, you know, just because pitching is such a fun thing. Like you, like Tenny has said many times, it is an art. When you can do it right, it is fun to watch. You know, sometimes you love that those close matchups because of how good pitchers can. But it, it's all the truth. But hey, guys, go into the comments, man. Tell us the pictures that you guys think we're missing out on. I'm sure someone's going to mention Rondon for some weird reason. You know what? I can't control anything. But yeah, man. So that is our thoughts. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, uh, Ray Ray, Tinny, got anything to say here? Man, just stay tuned, Soft Sports, because we're going to keep these videos rolling. We're not stopping this year. We're bringing you Astros content. We're bringing you Dynamo Dash. We're bringing you Rockets. We're bringing you Texans. So keep your eyes peeled to the channel. Absolutely. We might even throw some Houston Gamblers in there. Who knows? Who knows at this point? But uh, you guys, we thank you for your time. It's uh, We know time is precious, and we want to make sure that you guys get uh, as much uh feedback as we can from you we want to make sure that you guys give us your thoughts we will comment back i promise you i promise you especially me i go through every single comment on every sauce video i promise you and uh we look forward to hearing your feedback and again you think shout out to sauce sports you got it you got to go to the discord man if there was ever a time bro to get into the discord i'm telling you you need to get there asap yeah but thank you guys so yeah, make sure you guys join the Patreon and make sure you guys follow us on social media at SoftSportsATA on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Chucking up a deuce. Y'all stay saucy.